Ahoy hoy gang, if this is your first time with us, welcome, and if you joined us in our previous video, hey, hey, we'd love to see it, and I hope you're doing well. It's season 14! Ooh, one of my top five episodes of a pretty legendary season. Is it when the family buys Stomp? Maybe it's their fascination with ham! Who knows? Let's get into it! Top five episodes of season 14, let's go! Number five, Ham American Dad. I love a really good Stan and Roger episode, just where it's almost just them and no one else for them to just play off of each other. I, I think that's when Seth MacFarlane has the most fun with the characters, sort of like a Stewie and Brian episode, where again, it's just him playing off of himself. And I think American Dad, or Ham American Dad, whatever, just perfectly exemplifies that because you have Roger feeling jealous that Stan's part of a group and how he just wants to fit in and do stuff with Stan, and Stan feels that Roger is always going to take his glory. Both are valid. It's actually a very interesting twist on it. Both are in the right in some way until Roger just keeps spiking the hams and they just can't make any progress forward. But I love it. I think it is a fantastic A story complemented by a wild B story where it's just Francine trying to scare Greg. And I think that's great when she's got the ax and she's just walking over and then just bam, she gets hit by a truck. And that's beautiful. That is how, you, and I'm sure he was scared. He was terrified. He just saw someone get sideswiped on the side of the road. And it's, you know what? You know what? She got it though. She got him spooked. And it's just like Roger's weird Chicago ham song. And it's just like, oh, you know what? You know what? This is fun. This is exciting. I like all of this. I am I am thoroughly entertained with everything you've thrown before me, American Dad. I salute your slorts. I just, yeah, ham American Dad is good, dumb Stan and Roger having a classic adventure, much like a pinata named Desire or even Footsteps later on. It's just, it's such a good idea to always have these sort of refresher episodes where you are reminded every season of people's connections. You'll always have usually someone in the paradigm interacting with each other once per season. A Haley and Steve episode, a Haley and Stan episode, Haley and Francine. Everybody gets their turns because that allows you to build these ideas season by season while also still making sure everyone knows that you have a return to normal in mind. And Ham American Dad is just a perfect example of good American Dad. Number four, an Irish goodbye. Like I said, everybody seems to have their own adventures, and I genuinely think An Irish Goodbye is one of the best Francine and Haley episodes that also feels like it's a great way for them to hang out as not mother and daughter, but as wives. She's not offering, like, motherly platitudes. She's guessing which Muppet she'd get freaky with. And I don't know, I, I appreciate the evolution of their friendship, as Haley is very much an adult and doesn't need those little, like, childish anecdotes she can handle real conversations and it's you know real conversations with francine who while isn't like an idiot she is a little eccentric so what you're getting isn't necessarily great advice but it is fun especially when it's put up alongside jeff and stan genuinely having a good time and hanging out together as fur traders it's great i also love the return of maurice lamarche i just love hearing his voice he's a fantastic voice actor but i grew up on futurama so i'm absolutely going to be biased with him but an irish goodbye is fun it's creative it's got great musical numbers it has Haley spiraling in a very comedic way which he has the bar fight in ireland that's great that's fantastic and then she orders jeff around and he just goes like okay babe like that's i don't know realistically you could put ham american dad and irish goodbye in either spot but the gap between number four and number three is so vast that it, they, they might as well be in different seasons. It's, these are good episodes, but they are not amazing episodes. We're gonna get into those, but this one is still just a solid 23 minutes of good stuff. Number three, Pride Before the Fail. There are so many reasons that this episode, that Pride Before the Fall, is some of the best American Dad of all time. 
Not only do we get guest star Kathy Najimi, who is absolutely amazing and made me want to go out and grab myself a Yoshinoya beef bowl so they can get to Yoshinomi. Ah, I just, I, I love, it's like George Lowe in The Long Bomb. I just, I adore hearing her. I think she's a ton of fun. I love hearing her in any project. And so just to hear her in this one episode of American Dad just pulls me all the way in. And then you get Roger trying to make sure that Haley graduates. And it's just Haley versus Roger again in one of the greatest combinations of all time. Yes, please. Sign me up for this delicious yum yum A story of high quality American Dad good stuff. Surely the B story couldn't be any better than this. Oh wait, it's Klaus fixing the dent in Francine's car and absolutely tricking her ride. I love it. I love everything about it. I love that Steve learned Spanish. I love that Klaus is watching her Amazon shopping list. I just, it is so fun. I didn't even make it to Rodney. It's just like, that's great. All of this is great. I, I love that Roger has this overachieving t straight A character that feels very reminiscent of like super optimistic Asian Roland Chang. And instead we just, oh. It's also just another really, really, really great Haley episode. Much like an Irish goodbye, season 14 is willing to throw hearty A stories at Haley because her character can handle them. Her character can absolutely be the focus of an episode of American Dad. And still, when Jeff is like, you're hogging all the blankets, babe, and falls out of the car, I love it so much. <laughs> it's great. It's just absolutely amazing. Pride Before the Fall is top tier. And it is in no small part to Kathy Najimi's incredible vocal work. I don't know. It's such a fun episode. Number two, I am the Jeans, the Gina Lavetti story. Now we've had a great, you know, Roger and Haley adventure. We had a fun Francine and Haley adventure as they navigate being wives together, which was a phenomenal Irish themed episode. It was delightful. And then, you know, it's only fair that we have one of the best Francine and Roger episodes imaginable in I Am The Jeans. I love I Am The Jeans. Between Tuttle being a master of cutting and just that because he's so cool with these scissors that cut through pennies. And then it's just, oh, oh man. The A story's great. The, the coordinates and the jeans, and it's just delightful. The boys club. Yeah, with the boys club. Yeah. It's just, I love that Francine always gets power hungry in these situations. And I adore that in this one instance, Roger isn't along for the ride. Roger just wanted to make jeans. Now, this might have been cosmic brainwashing that made him want to do this, but it was there nonetheless. And then you're like, okay, so we have these cosmic jeans that are trying to fly off into space and tell everyone that confidence is sexy. What could the B story possibly be? It's a Stan and Steve Freaky Friday where their eyebrows switch. And I, I remember watching this episode with my wife and she never understood why I just start cracking up when they're like, oh, I wish I had his eyebrows. And then the magic transfers their eyebrows and it barely makes a difference. But everyone else treats them like it does. Everyone treats them like it's this huge changing thing. And it's so... Great! Again, I love stupid ideas. Maybe I'm a moron. Maybe I'm an idiot. But I adore dumb ideas. I adore when a dumb idea is handled masterfully and they actually add to it. Like, it could have just been, yeah, we switched eyebrows and people just gone, oh, okay. But no, no, because everyone else acts like it's a big deal, it elevates the episode as a whole. There's just so much to love in I Am The Jeans, and it is... It is one of my favorite, just pure American Dad adventures of all time. It's it's a great little fun watch. Number one, Rabbit Ears. You know I had to do it to him. You know I had to put this in here. Yeah, no, how could I not? It's Rabbit Ears. Rabbit Ears is... I, I remember watching it the first time and I was just absolutely 
mesmerized. I, I remember I had just watched the like Jordan Peele version of Twilight Zone, and I thought that he was an excellent host. I thought that he channeled that proper energy for it, but all the side stories were just kind of okay. They weren't like, they weren't classic Twilight Zone. And I think a lot of that was just personal preference because it seemed like it was more along the lines of like the 90s Twilight Zone where it had like Katherine Heigl taking out baby Hitler. But I just, I would have loved if it was like good black and white and had, you know, like that sort of retro charm to it. I think that would have been a really cool and interesting take. And then I watched this episode of American Dad where he gets pulled into this giant, you know, CRTV. And I'm like, okay, okay, this is actually really cool though. And then you find out the monster is played by Chris Pine, who is just absolutely owning it. I mean, we always talk about how great of an actor Chris Pine is. He's in all kinds of hero movies. He does all kinds of roles, but he is actually a phenomenal voice actor. And hearing him in this episode, it's almost unrecognizable. And I really, I really appreciate that the B story of Roger being a baby does not cut into the A story's time. They don't focus on it a ton, and it just gives you time for Stan and Tuttle to get more and more lost in this Nighthawk's hideaway. I just, oh, I, I know people don't believe me when I say Rabbit Ears is transformative. But I genuinely believe it's like one of those like Toriko menu items that like once you add it, it's like if you watch this, you will better understand who I am as a person because this has helped me become who I am today. Rabbit Ears showed me that American Dad isn't just a parody series. It's not just a satire series. It's not just a comedy series. American Dad is truly creative adult animation. Like, I could sing the praises of Rabbit Ears, but you really just need to go back and rewatch it yourself because every time you watch it, you discover something new. You discover a different trick. Like, when the camera bot comes in, I thought that was so cool. It just, it, it's so funny because American Dad very rarely breaks the 180 degree rule. They never try and manipulate the camera without purpose. They're never lazy with it. They are always aware. And I honestly think they treat staging for a scene like they would stage a sitcom. They make sure that everyone has tabs. They're always following them while they're being animated. And it sounds really, really dumb, but it's that natural movement. It's that natural direction that makes American Dad so relatable. And then in Rabbit Ears, it's one of those few instances where they do flip the camera but they're showing you why they're flipping the camera. They're showing you this encroaching darkness that Stan and Tuttle have to escape from. And the best part about this and the part that you're going like, wait, academic, what are you talking about is there's not an actual camera, but they treat it like it's being filmed. They treat it like it's being shot from all these different angles. I don't know, I, I appreciate the professionalism there. Even Family Guy still does this. It's just, it is a care that you don't see lesser series take. And I don't know, I, I really appreciate the use of angle changes in Rabbit Ears. I appreciate the use of music in this episode. I mean, the background music is so well composed. I just, there's, there's so many ways to love this episode. It is easily one of the most experimental American Dad episodes. And had any element broken or just not worked at all, the episode would have failed as a whole. This was a perfect juggling act that turned into one of the best weird episodes of any show ever made. I gotta be honest, if you didn't think Rabbit Ears was gonna be number one, that's on you. Rabbit Ears is a transformative piece of media, and I'm just glad I got to talk about it. But what were your top five episodes of season 14? Anything you think I was right on, wrong on? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like what you saw, make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Season 14 is, yeah, just more good dadage. You know, I could sit here and talk about all the worst episodes of every season, but that doesn't do a show like American Dad True Justice. Between things like Irish Goodbye, Pride Before the Fall, and American Dad, there's just a lot to love. And in season 15, we get some really odd references and one of my favorite episodes of all time. Thank you all so much for watching. If you want to support the channel, consider joining our patron or membership groups. $2 a month and you can support the channel as well as getting early content and your name on this beautiful list here. Ooh.
that is going to do it for us here. As always, stay strong, stay you, keep fighting. I'm proud of you. And tomorrow is always a new day. You got this. Goodbye, everybody, and I'll see you next time.